Howdy, howdy. All right, so for today, we're gonna be continuing on your body paragraphs. Yesterday, you guys were working on pulling out those pieces of evidence and topic sentences from your outline and adding those to actual paragraphs that you were writing in No Red Ink. The thing is, it can be a little bit complicated. So let me open this slideshow up really quick. This is the slideshow you guys used to help you write yesterday in No Red Ink. So looking at this outline right here, your paragraph wasn't done, right? So you needed to make sure that you had a topic sentence and these pieces of evidence, but then you needed to go in because these were concrete details. Then you needed to go in and make it a deeper thought by adding a commentary. So in No Red Ink, if you guys go back to your guided draft that you're working on, again, the name is Courage and Impact, People That Inspire Us, you should already at this point have your body paragraphs mostly written. If they're not all the way done, it's not the end of the world, but you want to make sure you finish those first today before you move on to today's stuff. So you guys have written some body paragraph stuff in here. Now we need to actually go in and cite your sources. So if you guys borrowed any information from somebody else or from a website or a quote from somebody, um, then you need to make sure that you're going in and citing your sources. So this is where things get a little bit different. Normally, um, if we had a full research project, you guys would be doing a works cited page, also known as a bibliography. As a reminder, those look like... That's not it. That's not it either. Um, those look like these right here. So here's a work cited. So each one of your sources, you guys would actually have all your information about. We're doing a mini project. So instead of focusing on a bibliography or a works cited page, you're just going to be doing something called in-text citations. So in-text, it's in-text, means that whenever you want to give somebody credit, let me go here real fast, find what I'm looking for. So let's say that this is a paraphrase, um, which you guys will find out about in a second, that you're using. Your in-text citation will usually appear, I've got a quotation mark right there, um, your it'll appear in parentheses um, after you quote the person. So if somebody said it, uh, like if it was their name, you could either say, um, Malala once said, or Malala stated that in her address to the UN, Malala said that, and then do your quote, or you could do the quote and then end that with Malala um, in parentheses. So I wanna talk about how to actually do in-text citations when you're looking at a website versus when you're looking at uh, like an interview, because those are kind of weird. Um, you've probably done stuff with a book before, but maybe not with a website, which is mostly what we're using, right? Um, or an in-person interview if you're interviewing, interviewing somebody in your life. So um, you guys are going to go back in your body paragraphs today and add your in-text citations to make sure you're giving credit to your websites and to make sure that you're giving credit to the people that said stuff. Um, I think, yes. So if you guys go over here to your, your passages, these are your example passages in No Red Ink. You guys can see how this sort of looked. Um, right here, this was from a website. Um, that, ignore that little hyperlink there. But this is from a website, uh, a, a web article that was called Not Educating Girls. So that is a reference to that particular website where she got this idea from. You'll notice this is not in quotes, right? This is not in quotes. So she didn't pull, the author didn't pull this directly out of the, the website. What she actually got this from, oops, give me just a second. Oh no, my loom is panicking. <laughs> uh, there we go. What she got this from um, was a, it's a paraphrase. So she read maybe like a paragraph or two that was on this web article. And then she decided to put that information together. She didn't know that information off the top of her head. She got it from this web article, but then she wrote it out sort of in her own words. The trouble is while she wrote that out in her own words, that's not her own idea. So she still needs to give credit to that web article. And that's how she did it right here. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. Um, she also actually quotes Malala. So she says, Malala encourages us to speak up. She said, this is another way you can give credit to your person if you're actually doing a direct quote from that person. You don't have to give the website that you got the quote from. You just need to know who said the quote. Um, so you can say Malala said or Malala stated, right? Um, right there, you guys can see it again. So both of those are great ways to do in-text citations. If you're like, okay, this is confusing, panic, panic, please don't, check it out. If you scroll down, again, you're doing all your work in No Red Ink today, but there is a helpful document that will show you guys how to do some of these. 
it says in-text in citation examples. I'm going to quick make a copy. If you guys want to have a review of like, okay, I'm really confused. When do I actually need to cite a source or give credit? There is a YouTube video at the very top of this document that you guys can watch. And it's going to go over basically how to cite or like cite somebody when you're quoting them directly, when you're paraphrasing, or when you are summarizing. So it's going to kind of go over some of those different rules um, of like how you can do that and give credit. It uses Brave as an example. Just remember in the parentheses, you'll be quoting the person that said that or the name of the website article that you got it from. So that's at the very top of your document. For really specific instructions though, um, here you guys go. On this document, it says if you need to give credit to a website, um, if it's a direct quote, like you're actually using quotation marks, right? You'll need to use your quotation marks and then in parentheses, add the title of the website uh, or the web article and then put your period at the end. So here's an example up here. Include the words from website you're using here. It can be copied and pasted. Make sure it's not too long of a quote. And then you'll put the website in parent title in parentheses, um, USA Today, and the article's name is, well, for example, this one is Facebook looks to raise awareness, right? Um, if you wanted to do a paraphrase, here's what that would look like. Pro tip, the period of your sentence will actually go after the parentheses. It will not go like inside of the quotation marks. You don't need quotation marks when you do a paraphrase. What if you did an interview of your uncle or your brother or your grandmother or your mom for your uh, person with a positive impact? So here, same thing again as an example. There's two ways to do that. You guys can include words from the interview um, and then put the last name of the person in parentheses. Um, or you can just say that's the quote that they said, comma, and then put their quote in quotations. So uh, examples, direct quote. I knew I'd always wanted a job where I could make a real difference in people's lives. And then the person, the last name of the person that said that in the interview was Ivy. Um, or you could say, my mom said, you know, if your mom's last name is Ivy, you could say, my mom said, I knew that I always wanted a job where I could make a real difference in people's lives. Both of these are completely acceptable. If you need to paraphrase, maybe you did an interview and your mom like kept like talking on and on and on and it was a cool story, but you needed to make it shorter. If you need to paraphrase her and put it in your own words, you still need to give her credit because it's her idea or her story. So at the very end of your paraphrase, you don't need quotation marks. Um, you would put in parentheses your mom's last name. That's another way that you could do that. So read through this. Let us know if you need any help or have any questions. Make sure you message your teacher. The goal today, again, is to go back into your body paragraphs and make sure that you are giving credit where credit is due, whether it's from a website or from an interview or a quote from your person. Um, you probably want to have at least one quote in there. Um, you don't want to have a complete lack of, of, of quotes. You really want your person to feel like present in your essay, right? So if you don't have a quote in there and you're like, I don't have anything to cite, go find a quote. Cite a quote, please. <laughs> that has something to do with your, your topic. All right, that is a wrap. I'll see you guys later. Happy citing.